very good evening to our viewers as we bring you our Monday night program on Close Pond 24 7 of very rainy and damp New York. I hope, Guyana, it's much better there. Um, yesterday and today, we're having the remnant of Hurricane Ian, I believe. Um, so we are, take, we are soaking in here. The entire day in New York was tremendous amount of rain, but you know what? We thank God for the rain as well. Um, this evening, we also want to again wish our Jewish community, if I'm sure there's Jews in Guyana now as well, um, happy Yom Kippur as they celebrate the festival of repentance after Rosh Hashanah. Um, the Hindu community continues to celebrate um, Naurat, and I believe tomorrow, Tuesday, will that will come to an end. So again, we want to wish our Hindu brothers and sisters happy Naurat. This evening, we we have a little different discussion in that we are talking about transparency uh, within Guyana, and I know many times. Um, whether it's the PNC, is the coalition afterwards, is the PPP. In opposition, everyone screamed that there is no transparency. In governments, for some reason, the government keeps things very private until they're forced to disclose it. So tonight we want to discuss some of that and who other can do it. Um, I guess more eloquently than the president of the Transparency Institute of Guyana, Mr. Frederick Collins. Mr. Collins, welcome to the program tonight. Thank you, Charles. Glad to be here. And of, of course, with me is my co-host, Dr. Rose. Dr. Rose, welcome. Thank you, Charles. And welcome, Mr. Collins. And to all our listeners, you're listening to the Fair and Balance Network, Global Span 24-7. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Collins, I know we have a lot to discuss tonight, but before we start, we just want to get, I'm not sure, I might be wrong as well, many Guyanese knows about Transparency Institute of Guyana. Do you want to tell us a little history of that organization? Okay, that's fine. Um, Transparency, according to its documents of incorporation, was formed in 2011 or thereabouts. And um, it was formed with some very active civil society people at that time, one of whom is still very, very active, that is um, Chris Ram. In fact, he's the one who invited me to join the organization. Um, we have had presidents, and at that time, they were members like um, Anand Gulsaran, um, who was the head. And um, I do recall that um, when the organization was formed, um, for some reason, the government felt um, we visited it with a certain amount of hostility. And um, I remember Chris and um, Anand um, being identified as um, anti-national and all manner of things like that. But that withstanding, I recall a, 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 one of our earlier um, activities where the um, where Mr. Shearer and the um, then um, finance minister, who is finance minister again, um, uh, uh, you know, did presentations um, with us, and so it's been a kind of um, mixed relationship. Um, we have had annual dinners at which um, uh, the well-known wicket keeper, who was at the time. Um, head of Transparency Trinidad came to um, speak. Um, you know, you know who I'm talking about. I'm getting on the old old side. That's Vincent. Right? That's Murray. 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 <laughs> Derek Murray. Derek Murray. Murray. Derek Murray. And he he told us he said it doesn't matter which government is in power, you're always going to be seen as the enemy, and he's a prophet <laughs> because he experienced the same thing in um, Trinidad. But yes, those were the early days. And uh, we've had presidents like uh, uh, Nadia, Nadia Segar, and um, we, 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 we've also had um, Gino, Gino, Gino Passad, who's now Justice Gino Passad. 
And so those are our, our earlier days. So, Mr. Collins, 2011 started. What What is the objective? I know Transparency Institute is international, I, 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 you know, I guess. What is the objective of the organization? Well, we try our best to fight corruption. We are in the business of advocacy. And so um, what we are in the business to do is influence the population to understand the ramifications of corruption, what enables corruption, what are the symptoms of corruption, and um, how our silence, how our own behavior helps to um, make corruption grow, increase or decrease. So the citizen needs to understand his or her role in um, the growth of corruption or the, de the debt of corruption. So we have been in the business of um, attempting to um, do that kind of thing. Um, what we have done in the past, we have had marches, um, we have had, we have held um, uh, appearances in, in some parts of the country. And over the last two years, of course, um, we have had COVID put a, a, a great damper on that kind of thing. But um, essentially, we have been struggling to keep our voice, uh, make our voice heard. In, the, in essence, we have been more in evidence by our writings than anything else. In fact, we, we, we didn't foresee that that is what was going to be keeping us more than anything else in the minds of the public. And so our articles, thanks to Starbrook News and, and, and more lately, Kaichur News, um, have been having quite an impression on the minds of the public. The point I'm getting, Mr. Collins, is that it seems as though the Transparency Institute, it's a small clique of professional Guyanese. Is that the right way? I mean, because I'm not seeing the mass, the massive support from the grassroots. Well, the word clique is an interesting um, choice because um, there would there would be those who would love to uh, put us in that box. Um, we have been, I would say, struggling to shed the image of a bourgeoisie organization. And um, we, I don't know how, well, I can say that we have, we have some ideas on how we can begin to shake that. But we have had members, the members who have been um, willing to join us are the members who appreciate the need for a civil society, a strong civil society. And unfortunately or fortunately, those tend to be the Guyanese who are more informed on that kind of thing. And um, not the ones who are the, 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 the average Joe. We are working to shed that image, but in the working to do that, what we have found is that especially of late, we have had a, a, a focus on us of the, um, there's a certain element, uh, we call them the left brain of the government, not the right brain, because the right brain invites us to, to stuff and they invite us to participate in certain functions and so on, like the one that they just launched, which is their uh, anti-corruption, they call it anti-corruption, uh, what is it, structure or what have you. And um, yes, they call it the anti-corruption framework. And um, But then there are those who are bent on painting us as a small clique, and I, 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 I hope that your choice of those words <laughs> are not, is, is not a choice of your own making, but you merely, they just came to you because that is how some people, but no, we definitely uh, want to widen our appeal, but because of um, certain um, attitudes we see that have been increasing over the last two years, um, there are Guyanese we notice who uh don't want to speak out anymore they were speaking before and um suddenly they have become crystallized in their silence 
and I have spoken to some people from the church as well, the religious organizations, and the same thing. And um, because of that unwillingness to um, uh, uh, join organizations like, 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 like ours, we are going to find that we will have the uh, accusation that we are a small clique, as you put it. So on the one hand, we are trying to increase the numbers, and there are those who are being quite successful as um, making sure that we, we our, our image is um, uh, as, as unappealing um, as possible. Well, again, and I want to, what all Guyanese, I believe, want to have a society free of corruption. And as you rightly said, when you get into the position of authority, you throw that aside in most cases. Whether it's the current government or the previous government, the same thing. In opposition, they're all against corruption. In government, it's, you know, we speak about it. It's like the Republican Party here in the US. They, their values measured a lot with immigrants, but the Democratic Party was able to absorb most of the immigrants within the Democratic Party. So you got to give Democrats credit for that. So even though all Guyanese would want to see a country free of corruption, and that is what your institute is trying to portray, as you said in your opening remark, you're not getting the mass following you. Why? Because they're Unfortunately, I, I, I never thought that um, the amount of fear or that fear would have been such an operative word after those years of the 1980s when Rodney was assassinated. And certainly we don't have that thick element of fear in the air, but there's still a... Uh, a, 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 the, the, the same kind of behavior, the reluctance to speak. And as I said, I have talked to people. For example, um, I was inviting a member of my church to the board. That was a Sunday morning. And his response to me was, you know, Mr. Collins, I read the papers, you know. And what Sunday was that? That was a Sunday in which one of the high members of government had seen it fit to unleash a torrent of, of criticism against civil society. So as far as he's concerned, he was concerned, he didn't want to be on the receiving end uh, of that kind of um, uh, uh, criticism. So essentially, um, what we have, I'll tell you something else. Uh, recently, we learned, and um, it was without asking, this was a, a, a prominent member of the public. He was speaking at a certain function. And he said the following. He said, anyone who is known to be interested and in reporting on what is happening in the regions is ostracized. Ostracized. So when you have that kind of behavior of the society, what that does, it hits at any program that we want to, because transparency and advocacy is about getting the population to understand its role. And that role is paying attention to what is happening in their communities. How is money being spent? Is it being spent fairly? Is it being spent in a way that you can track what is going on? So that people understand their role. So when you when when you have that fostering that kind of attitude that people are being, if you were known to do that, you're being excluded. You can understand then the root of this attitude that we're seeing. Yeah, it's like it's like the hands that feed you. You can't you know bite that hand. I guess that context. But Mr. Collins, um, didn't transparency lost a glorious opportunity to? get the masses behind them during that period when in the 2020 election, your organization was very quiet. Even though the world had known at that time that the coalition was trying to rig the election and your organization was quiet. Isn't that one of the reasons why the Guyanese didn't 
are not taking this organization seriously? That's my, what do you think? Is that a fair statement? It is a very unfair and uninformed statement. Okay. Because it, and not only is it uninformed, but I'm, I'm, you, you, you're causing me to wonder um, whether instead of the transparency issues with the oil contract that you want to discuss, you want to rehash the same issues that I addressed the last time I was on your program. And I must tell you that I would not consider that to be a good use of your investment of time. But let me return to it as you have you have touched upon it. Number one, we, we already spoke at the last time when that was being put to us by none other than um, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, lawyers on, uh, who appear on your program. And um, we pointed out to him that we did speak out. We did, and we, we, we directed, he asked me whether I would condemn whatever it was. I said, by all means, that is a matter of record. I suppose you have the recording. So I don't know why we're going over that. But again, I will tell you that there was no lost opportunity for the simple reason that we are not a human rights organization. We are a corruption fighting organization. What we are finding is that over the last five years, out independent of Guyana, that our um, head office and other organizations are beginning to realize that corruption is becoming a human rights issue. But when we started the organization in 2011 and thereabouts, corruption was not seen as human rights. Corruption was anti-corruption and human rights was more in the domain of issues like gender issues, the oppression of women, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and if you're going to be talking about the rigging of elections, that would have come more under the under the domain. Of course, it include it is included in political corruption, so that it's difficult to really separate one from the other. But I will tell you again. Let me let me take this opportunity to point out that there were those who were from the one side of the fence who wanted us to be more vocal. And there were those who were on the other side of the fence who wanted to see what they were saying. We were being pulled from both sides. We are not a PPP organization, nor are we a PNC organization. We have members from both sides. We need our listeners to understand that. The people who are members of TIGI have members from both sides. For example, um, we, we have uh, Enrico Wilford, who is known to be, um, he has been our, 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 uh, our master of ceremonies at several of functions. Enrico is associated with the coalition. He's a member of our organization. So we, were, we, are, we, are not, we are not here to express PPP views or PNC views. We have both. So when we were expected, when they, the PPP members perhaps thought that they were the only ones pulling at our sleeves, they were the other ones pulling at our sleeves. So I hope that gives you some sense yeah, and I'm, of what was I'm, happening. I'm glad you mentioned that before the rose come on, but what I'm getting, Mr. Collins, and, I, and you're totally right, you spoke it against it, but what I'm getting from most Guyanese that I speak with, they, they get the impression that your organization was very quiet. And, but you, as you said, you spoke out, but apparently they didn't hear. And that's, I think that's the problem we have in Guyana, in, con, in, in any communication, you speak, but did the listener hear? And that's exactly what happened in this case, in my view, is that the organization did speak out against, you know, free and fair election or for free and fair election, but the Guyanese did not hear. I don't that. think that is the case. I don't think that is the case. Okay, well, that's I, the view that I, that's no, the, no, but that's why I'm here. You brought this up, I, I, I don't think that is the case. Let me tell you that there are certain managed perceptions in this country. One of them is that the, 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 there's an ethnic, fierce ethnic problem between blacks and Indians in this country. That is a fed and manufactured, somebody benefits from that. Because if you look and you see what is happening in Guyana, it only comes out at election time. So I'm saying to you, that one cannot take the manufactured narratives that you're seeing in this country at face value. And that is one of them. 
There are those who want to keep pumping that narrative because they do not have an interest in the society fighting corruption. I, we have, we have, uh, in our last article, where um, uh, uh, we, 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 we exposed that, where I think it was Miranda LaRose, she wrote, she interviewed me, and we pointed it out, that there were those who had an investment in making sure that our voice is not heard. They are the ones who are going to push that narrative. And I, I got to. to you, sir, that you please make sure you understand that. Okay, well said, Mr. Collins. Dr. Rose? Yes, uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, you did give a background of Tigi, but not about yourself. Can you tell us your background? <laughs> now you're going to make me. No, 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 no. In, in, the, brief, want, in the brief, in the like briefest you manner. Sing out, you're going to make me calm. No, <laughs> no, no, in the briefest way. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, um, my, my background, you know, I, 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 I don't like to talk about myself that much, but my background is, um, to make it short, I was a math teacher, um, then I was uh, an insurance executive, and then I was the company secretary director. I retired in 2010. Um, I have been a preacher in a Methodist church from around 2015, thereabouts. And so I'm retired, I'm retired company secretary. And essentially, um, that's it. What more would you like to know? No, that's okay, that's enough, that's enough. And you've been a long-standing member of TG. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you mentioned tonight that bourgeoisie governments we know we have, this country since independence only had two governments, two party government, PEP or PNC, or PEP or APNU, which is still PNC. Now, which government you think lacks more transparency? <laughs> well, I didn't say Bush was the government. I said we are we Tiggy are trying to fight a bourgeoisie image because of the people that we attract and the people who are interested in the work we do tending to be from what are considered to be the bourgeoisie uh i didn't i didn't use the term bourgeoisie government but in terms of the question that you are asking which one is more i don't think that is a valid question for a person from transparency to give an answer to i would simply say as we did and as we have put in writing, that the um, both, that, that, that's a very easy question to answer in the sense that both of them have been intransparent. But what we have also said in writing is that over the last two years, we have noticed that whatever freedom we represented, because in our project that we have now, we represented to our funders that things were free, being freed up. We, the nation was feeling freer. But since 2020 to now, there has been a closing of the flower. There has been a, 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 a somehow a perception of consequences if you speak out. In terms of which, therefore, has been more intransparent, um, if you are talking about the effect on the society, I will put it as a matter of timing. Whether it is a matter of you want to say it is uh, one government or the other, that would be you to your your burden to conclude. What we can do is we can attach it to a time. Um, the, the, as people have said, co uh, uh, coincidence is not causation. In terms of the um, what we have put in writing, however, in terms of lack of transparency, is that one of the things which um, we have have since learned. Because, you know, in being invited into this organization, I was no, I didn't even know what was civil society. I was asked to join and I thought that I could be of use. But what we have found is that um, when you look at works like by Lee Kuan Yew, you, you will notice a map of Guyana in his writings. Because he has said that as long as you have a situation where you do not have campaign financing laws, what is going to happen is that political parties will be funded by those it has to, rep they have to repay. 
and they are going to use any means necessary to pay their debts. And what that fuels is intransparency because you have got to make sure that if you run, if you if you claim that there is a, an, a, an auction or you claim that there is a bid, that it looks okay, but you're manipulating it to make sure that the person who funded you gets the, the, the deal. And that is part of the problem with both parties. Okay. What yardstick Tigi uses to measure transparency? What, what yardstick? yardstick? The yardstick that we use is the yardstick that we publish annually. And that comes from the, the our, our principles in Berlin. Okay, it is called the Corruptions Perception Index. Index, okay, CPI. Yes, or the, 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 the CPI, another CPI, not the Consumer Price Index, the Corruptions Perception Index in capitals. And um, that, um, um, we had a bit of a problem with it um, when it was published because ironically, we were, we were attacked, we were attacked for it when it was our intention to make the government look better than it thought we were we were making it look it read what other people wrote and put it at our feet because what the report was saying is that while there were two or three points difference i think we were in the 40s 43 somewhere like sorry now um if you looked at the trend what you will notice is that those were not significant that in essence, the performance over the last three or four years was pre was a approximately the same. And uh, the Vice News looked at that and said, and accused uh, the current government and said, look, you all dropped two points. How you explain that? And we got, uh, they, they used what Vice News said to uh, attack us, although we, but to make matters worse, our version that we asked the press to print, where we looked at the local situation and we, we gave our own local analysis, they didn't bother to print it because apparently they were more comfortable, it was more newsworthy to reflect what Vice News said. So there it was. We were uh, uh, attempting to put things in a more realistic framework and we got flack for what people wanted it to be. In fact, we had to point out that they were probably looking at what was happening in 2022. That would not be reflected until 2023. So, you know, these are some of the, these are some of the issues that we, 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 we have to have a problem with. Uh, but we, it's life in Guyana. Uh, Mr. Collins, the IMF just a, a week ago has applauded the Guyana government for improving and and its anti-corruption framework and fiscal transparency, pointing to five areas. One, the Integrity Commission. Two, the Public Procurement Commission. Three, the Natural Procurement and Tender Board and Tender Administration Board. Four, the Auditor General Reports. And five, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiatives, EITI. <laughs> Would you support the IMF report? <laughs> well, based on what you are saying, um, I am. I see. I'm laughing. I'm curious because my answer to the short answer will be no, N O no. I don't know what kind of politics they are playing, but um, let's get the, the 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 one of the things that you included, for which you are giving the government credit. And I am looking here at a, yes, I think you can see. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing it, it yes. Is, it is saying um, Cooperative Republic of Guyana anti-corruption framework. We were invited, two representatives of our organization went, and they did the, uh, they went through the, uh, they, they, they listed all of these things, they're listing all these integrity bodies, et cetera, et cetera. And guess what? They made it clear that they were going to accept no questions. Well, I don't know 
what kind of anti-corruption framework you are going to launch and make it clear that you are not going to accept any questions. Now, we raise this matter or we touched upon it in the wake of the 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 Sioux, Sioux gate as it has um, as it has become known um, uh, you know I I, 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 I I we prefer to call it the world of Susie Rung. You know, if you, I don't know, Dr. Rose, you're probably young enough to know the movie, The World of Susie Wong. Well, we prefer to call it The World of Susie Wong. And um, when that matter came, when that uh, uh, matter came up and the failure to have an investigation, we said clearly if the government was serious about its new shiny anti corruption framework, a reasonable person would not even have to ask it to have an investigation. It would follow from what it said here. So I don't know what the IMF is talking about. I'm sure they must be privy to other signs of sincerity that uh, we at TV are unaware of. In terms of the, um, in terms of the access to information, that is one of the worst issues that um, we have to address. When you consider that one of our ex-members, Alfred Bulai, asked the Commission of uh, Information for some um, facts, he was directed to who to go and ask. So he's being, he is being sent to get the information. Well, let me tell you. In India, you have what is called the right to information. And the smallest child can apply and ask for information once you pay the fee. And they have to give an answer in a certain time. And Nobody gets sent to somebody else to decide who is going to answer. Their duty is to get that information. If we are sincere, that is the kind of thing we are going to see. So I don't know what the IMF is talking about, sir. I, I tend to concur because I had entanglements with the IMF a few years ago. And I found out that they have people with degrees in sociology and psychology analyzing the economic trends in countries in Africa and in Asia and so forth. So when I questioned that, they said, well, you don't have to have a degree in economics. So I, they have a lot of generalists working for them now. But that's, that's another topic for itself. Let me ask you this question. When the oil contract was signed by Rafael Trotman under APNU government, it was, the contract was not released until about 18 months after or two years after. What did TG did then? <laughs> What did what he do? Did do? Yeah. What did he did well, could be traced back since 2017. In fact, in preparation for this, I was um, I was looking at one of the um, one of the the reports that was in the Chronicle that appeared in the Chronicle, and um, that report list um, said what was our position, which is one that the um let me let, let, just give let me see if i can uh just, just just let me see if i can yes i think i've i think i have it here um it it is a report in the chronicle of first june 2017 and what it is saying here is that um, make it public. That is the title of the article. It says this not only provides, I'm giving an extract, this not only provides an unprecedented opportunity for engaging all, talking about opportunities lost, for engaging all our human resources in guarding of our patrimony, but in fact demands that they be so engaged. This is printed in the Chronicle of 1st June 
sorry, 7th June 2017, reporting on our position. And what it continues to say, an indispensable approach to evening the odds. What odds? Because we made the point that Exxon is a descendant of a titan, as we call it. It's a titan descending from the community invented the oil industry. We'll have information, so much information that we didn't even know existed. And to even the odds that were stacked against it, we said that we must publish the contract drafts, drafts, and make the negotiations accountable to parliament. In this way, Guyanese of the diaspora, people like yourselves, like the OGGN, whose knowledge is vast in this area, like Dr. Adams, will be able to make contributions to the process and thus protect our company's interest. It is there in the press to be read. That's what we did. And of course, we were ignored. There were so many things that were ignored. Why? Because it was clear that there was an agenda and we believe driven by external influences driven by external influences that wanted to make sure that that very very advantage that we would have gained by getting the diaspora to comment on the draft was defeated that's what we did okay my final question before my colleague charles comes on uh Transparency Institute of Guyana, the primary purpose or role or goal is to expose corruption, corrupt practices and to make sure the pe people get information, which is to make sure transparency exists at every level of government. Now, but all you do is to talk and, and talk about these issues and publish them. The governments don't have to listen to you. So you have no no other means to enforce anything so is it fair to say that transparency the transparency institute of technology transparency institute of guyana is like a tiger without a teeth well can uh, bite you you are you your your conclusion might be right but it's based on incorrect reasoning because you have just redefined our purpose as i explained earlier <laughs> Our purpose is advocacy. Our purpose is to raise the level of awareness of the society in its own role at preventing corruption. We cannot do the, our work unless we are, or, 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 or one measure of how successful we are is the degree to which the society is becoming aware of its role in fighting corruption. As I said, our job is advocacy. In terms of exposing that, we, we don't have the capacity. There is no transparency body that can do that. Vice News has what is called investigative journalism. Even our local people, the closest we have come to investigative journalism is Capital, capital News. We don't have facilities for investigative journalism, which is dangerous. Um, so Vice News did that for us. Tiggy, Tiggy's job is not that. Our job is to call it as we see it, but as I said to you, our mission is advocacy. That is making aware of the issues of corruption and developing an awareness in the society of its own role. The Guyanese people, let me tell you, the Guyanese people have not been taught about what is our civic responsibility, not by the British, not by the PNC, not by the PPP. So when we see people going out on the road to demonstrate, the first thing we want to know is which party they belong to. The only, the only uh, uh, information I can tell you from my civics lesson as a child is who was the Minister of Education, C.V. Nunes. Who was who? There has never been a, a, a teaching of our people. What is your role and responsibility? So what do you expect now? So as the, the, the there's a saying, is it Chinese? 
where the water is muddy, the fishing is good. And to the extent that the water is so muddy and we can't fish, you are absolutely right. We are definitely not as effective as we would like to be. But people are not making, I'm saying to you, the left brain of the people, the powers that be, are not making it easy for us because it is not in their interest that we succeed. Uh, Dr. Veer Sami Ramaya, he was the government representative or coordinator in Borbis until I think last week or last month, something that he resigned. And in his statement, which I read in the papers, and I want the, the powers to be and those in authority to say, this is not what I'm saying. I'm quoting from a statement issued by Dr. Veer Sami Ramaya. He said, corruption now is worse than the last 28 years, meaning the last 23 years of PP rule and the last five years of APNU rule. So he said corruption is worse today than those 28 years. Would you su support that or would you agree to that? I don't, I don't know, know about the accuracy, accuracy of your statement, statement, but on the basis of its uh, being fact, this is what I would say, that the difference in corruption is a matter of perception. As I said, transparency deals with uh, 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 the corruptions perception index. But I will say a little more than that. Um, I'm not surprised that um, another Guyanese at another time expresses that kind of uh, opinion, because you are you would remember that one of our uh, top political commentators. Um, who writes in, 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 in a paper that I don't, I, I, I don't read nowadays. I remember when he used to write in the uh, Starbrook News. He was the one who said that the PPP makes the PNC look like schoolboys, <laughs> type of level of corruption. So people will come from time to time and they will express their views about which corruption is greater than which. I suppose we can expect that. We won't comment on which is greater. Charles, over to you. Mr. Collins, we'll take a short commercial break. And when we come back, I know you have a presentation you want to also um, <laughs> present to our, to our viewers. So when we come back, we'll deal with that. Yeah, we'll take so a trip this year to tour the beautiful Dubai and Abu Dhabi with Travel Span. This package includes round trip with sites that are beauty to behold. Visit the Dubai Golden City from views at the top of the Burj Khalifa. Or tour Abu Dhabi and visit the Ferrari World theme park. Experience the desert safari with a barbecue dinner and belly dancing. And also have a Dow Cruise dinner. Call in Guyana 227-1701. That's 227-1701. Or in the United States 212-243-0865. That's 212-243-0865. And in Trinidad, call 645-1604. Are you missing homemade food, snacks, drinks, roti and curries, or have a busy schedule? Then get your favorite curries and roti delivered directly to your home with all from one supplier. Come order your duck, goat, or chicken, fully cooked and ready to eat with dal puri or bus up shut. We also now have chicken tikka masala or lamb vindaloo available with regular naan or garlic naan. Don't forget to add your solo, icy, coconut water, or nestle drinks to these delicious meals. Select your choice, and load your box and let allfromonesupplier.com deliver directly to your home. All From One Supplier has you covered for all your food. Plus if you need pepper sauce, curry powders, fish, meat, ghee, and so much more. We also have tasty pastries like pine tarts, cheese rolls, currants rolls, coconut rolls and so much more. Sales are ongoing every week, and your first order is 10% off once you apply the coupon code, Globespan24x7. Log on to allfromonesupplier.com today and purchase. Allfromonesupplier.com is your one-stop shop for all West Indian items and remember it's free shipping to all U.S. states. Looking for a reliable contractor? Look no further. Call Sings Construction today. At Sings Construction, they can cover all your jobs, interior and exterior. We cover painting, bathrooms, kitchen, doors, windows, tiles, brick, decks, flooring, and concrete. Call Naresh Singh today for your free quote at 9172384180. That's 9172384180.
celebrating an anniversary, renewing your vows, birthdays, bachelor or bachelorette parties, groups or conferences, then let Travel Spend organize an all inclusive vacation trip that suits your occasion. With 28 years of experience in the business, Travel Spend will tailor a package or cruise that suits all your needs for all occasions. Speak to our vacation experts and let them guide you. Call Russell or Allison to book your groups and special occasions, packages, or conferences. Call 212 243 0865. That's 212 243 0865. Okay, welcome back as we welcome back your audience and Mr. Uh, Frederick Collins. Mr. Collins, I didn't know that you were a Methodist and you were also a, a math teacher, you know, Mr. Ian Devonish was also a Methodist and also a very good math teacher. He became general manager for Demar Mutual. And I myself am a Methodist. I used to preach at the West Demar circuit. And, and I also, as a matter of fact, yesterday I preached here in New York in one of the Methodist church. So I'm, so among, <laughs> I'm among pastors here. <laughs> a lot of pastors. So? Wow. Is that so? That should tell you something, Dr. Rose. No. Let's start making some inquiries. It, <laughs> about what? <laughs> okay, Mr. Collins, you, you, um, there's a lot of questions. We, you know, you talk a lot of things that, you know, we need to follow up, but I want to give you the opportunity now. You do have a presentation for us with the oil and gas sector. And this is an important, component of Guyana and I'm surprised that the people of Guyana are not unified in demanding from the government and the opposition like today's paper I mean the, Mrs. Janke wrote a beautiful piece and said she's a uh, program last week renegotiation have nothing to do with sanctity of contract they're two they're two separate things like the North Pole and the South Pole and this government seems to be so bent on not renegotiating this contract when, as Mr. Adams said also, that when we signed this contract, there was, uh, it was only discovered like 1.1 billion barrels of equivalent oil. Now we have 11 billion proven barrels and more. So there's many rooms for renegotiation. So I don't know why the government is sticking rigidly to this sanctity of contract when as Mr. Adams, in his word, he said was, is a, is a set of BS. But what do you have to present to us today? Well, before, 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 um, I, I, I would, I, I would have to ask you to sh let me share my, uh, my screen. But before we begin to share my screen, let me respond to the comment you just made with regard to uh, Ms. Janke's uh, article from the diaspora today. And it might help to answer the question. One of the things that Guyanese need, we Guyanese need to understand is that certain things might look alike, but we have to be careful to establish the difference before we tread. And what Ms. Janke attempted to do there was to um, explain the difference between certain things and certain things that look like them or are claimed to be the same. However, here is the problem. I spoke to Chris Ram and he said I can quote him. Chris Ram does not agree with Ms. Janke. Let's get that very clear. Let's get the full significance of that. Ms. Janke is an international lawyer and Chris Ram is one of our premier accountants and the lawyer. And Chris's life is telling the difference between one thing and another. And the two cannot agree. Now, I don't know which one is correct, and I wouldn't even venture, but what we can say, we can conclude, is that this contract ain't easy to interpret. If you're going to have the, uh, 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 our, one of our top uh, environmentalists and international lawyer and our top, one of our top finance people disagreeing, we definitely have to be careful how we tread. And... Um, but that, having said that, there are certain levers that this government and the previous one could have pulled. It is clear that they are refraining 
from pulling that have nothing to do with the word the wording of the contract and necessary necessarily renegotiation the two governments seem to be afraid of exercising the authority on behalf of the people of this country they seem to be more interested in representing the interests of the oil company than in the people whose who, 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 who own the assets of this country. So that would be my comment to what you just said. Okay, so you want to show your presentation? But, uh, yes, yes, please. Um, let me... Audience, give us some time. Mr. Collins is going to share his screen and then he has some PowerPoint presentation he want to show us tonight. Uh, all right, so start sharing. Uh, are you seeing the screen? Anything there? Not yet. Not yet. No. You're still seeing. Uh... What about now? Nothing. All right. Let me try again. Uh, so. Uh, you practice it uh, before the session starts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Start cheering. All right. What about now? Yes, there's a blank screen, but I'm sure you will come up it, soon. It should come up in a minute. Yeah, you're on the screen. Wonderful. All right, so I will have to go pretty, pretty, pretty quickly, and um, I think that's the best thing to do because um, it gives the, uh, the, the, the the listeners more to chew on. So, the topic that I got was the oil contract political integrity, and the role, importance, and promotion of transparency in Guyana. And um, so, uh, oops, um, yes. So I will examine the need for transparency and its relevance to the oil contract and all natural resources. We've lost and the screen, Mr. Mr. Collins. Why should that have happened? It should have stayed because um, I didn't um, change. I didn't. What 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 happened? You came back now? Not yet. We're still seeing. Uh, we're not seeing your present. We saw the initial one that you had. Well, I, I will have to do it without it, and you'll just have to listen to me, because I'm accustomed to sharing on Zoom, and the other platform. And once you have selected your screen, um, for for the the uh, in this kind of case, it holds it. it doesn't when you want to ch change it. Um, and I use a PowerPoint protect, uh, uh, projection, it doesn't lose it. So I, I just have to keep speaking. Now, let me waste your time. Um, so the material I will present is new. Um, so are you seeing my face now, Ben? Lost yeah, we're seeing you, yeah. yeah. Great. So um, the question at question time, you can include any position that Tiggy has taken in the past. Now, one of the past uh, uh, positions to remind you is that as far as Tiggy is concerned, the Exxon contract is illegal since it is based upon an illegal act. We have said this and all we have gotten is a loud silence. It is as though people are afraid to take this statement to its logical conclusion. What was that illegal act? The illegal act was the minister uh, awarding um, a number of blocks which uh, which is outside of the limit that was given by law. And there was an argument, as it says, attempts to do as to whether the minister had such authority because in the, uh, what you call the regulations, the regulations attempt to stretch the minister's ability to um, change that maximum, 60 block maximum. And um, when we look at all the precedents in law, all of the precedents, all of them say the same thing. No servant, be he civil servant, be he minister, no one has the authority no matter what it says, to extend eternally, elastically, a limit that has been provided. It has to be reasonable, and it has to be for the purpose for which it was intended. 
And these, these acts, both, it, felt, it, it, it failed. That act failed both criteria. So we, we insist, we still maintain the contract is based upon an illegal act. In fact, um, what we have since learned is that it is material, very material, because when you are talking about um, a, giving a, a license up to a certain limit, and you have given 26,800 square kilometers, which is approximately, um, I think it was, was five times the amount on a single license, then what you have done is you have put the country at a disadvantage, especially when there was no ring fencing. We discussed that. This has been in some um, articles. So it is not just a theory. It is material, a, a material disadvantage that the country was put to. Um, let's go to transparency. What is transparency? It's the quality of being done in an open way without secrets. And that's according to the Cambridge Dictionary. Um, I can give you about 10 reasons why transparency is important. Number one, the information belongs to the people of Guyana. The people of Guyana are sovereign now. There is no king or queen who needs to keep information from the prying eyes of the natives. The natives now own the show. Article 9 of the Constitution says sovereignty belongs to the people That's who exercise true. it through their representatives and the democratic organs established by or under this Constitution. So all that information that they are hiding from us is ours. So let us say that you have a company. You and two or three people have gotten together, you put your money, and you have formed a company. Then what you are going to expect is that you will watch over your interests, how much money is being made, and at the end of it, if there's any profit, that you get a certain, um, uh, your share. But what we are seeing is that the Guyanese don't even seem to know that they own the company. This is why I said that we are not doing a, as good a job as we would like in raising the awareness of our people in what is their role. Sleeping share, shareholders can wake up to find their company has been taken over by a hostile company. For example, Belize woke up just in time. They found that there, uh, there, 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 there was a map that had been, that had parceled out a huge amount of blocks in, in, in the land divided up. And somebody was doing some kind of work, tourist work, and he heard a sound being repeated and he realized that there was some kind of drilling going on. And that is when they were saved in the nick of time. He, report, he reported what was happening, what was about to happen to their industries. The Belizean people, were galvanized into action. They realized what they would lose. And so they defeated, they were able to defeat secrecy. It is a secrecy that we have a problem with. Because as I said earlier, if the draft contract had been exposed to the diaspora, what we didn't know in Guyana, people like Dr. Adams and company would have been able to point out. But the whole idea seemed to have been a hustle to make sure that the Guyanese people avail itself of no such assistance. Secrecy in Belize, secrecy in Sri Lanka. They lost their port to the Chinese. There were they, 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 they was some kind of a fancy loan that the Rajapaksas took out. You all know that story. And what's the turmoil in Sri Lanka right now? Um, let's go to the Constitution of Guyana, Article 38. It turns out that this article is of vital importance to transparency. Because Article 38A, says democratic state with a healthy economy. It uses the word to ensure, ensure that Guyana is a democratic state with a healthy economy. The state shall provide appropriate support to any group which is, any group which is, or is claiming to be on the threat of marginalization. Well, you know that's a word we've been hearing bandied about the place. People saying that claiming that they, go, they, 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 they are on the threat of marginalization. Now, here's our point. There can be no awareness of the threat of marginalization 
without the information to know. How can you know if there is a threat of marginalization? Right now, our fishermen, our fisher folk, have been complaining for a while. In fact, if you read the article and, and, and the Belize discovery when they realized what was happening and the noise, the guy said the fish acted as if they were scared when that, ex that, that rhythmic explosion was going on. We have enough prima facie evidence to make a case that there is a connection between what is happening in our waters when, from the oil companies and what is happening to our fishing industry. But be that as it may, the information is what is necessary. Marge, uh, 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 transparency deals with the ability to see through, to, uh, to understand what is happening. We need information. I'm saying that you can't have Article 38 which promises defense against marginalization or even the threat of marginalization without information. And so there is a strong connection between the need for information and the work of any transparency group. Secret deals. Secret deals compromise national security. The Solomon Islands woke up to the realization that a, a deal had been signed with the Chinese. And suddenly, Australia realized that they had a security problem. But that's their problem. The people of the Solomon Islands did not know. They, they went on a, 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 a quite a, a riot when they discovered secret deals. This is what forced, these are what foster corruption. The criminally corrupt love secrecy. Documents in the Panama Papers show how kleptocrats and their families use anonymous companies to control state assets and purchase global real estate. Bribe payers, sanction busters, tax evaders, and terrorist financiers use anonymous companies for the same reason, secrecy. Now, how do you know what is your share of the oil proceeds by region? You have you 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 are a shareholder. You Charles, you Dr. Rose, you are shareholders. Do you know what's your share of this oil proceeds? Do you have any idea what should be due to you by region, by your community? How will you know? We have to have information. And how this money is being spent is important. So you cannot have transparency without information. Transparency is also key. It's a key factor for economic growth based on natural resources. The whole the, the, the exercise, my mission was to deal with the, in the context of natural resources, not just in oil. And it, we learned that transparency fosters trust among companies, civil society actors, citizens and governments. It is fundamental to building the consensus necessary for inclusive strategic decision-making. Transparency can create the climate for openness and inclusion needed to mitigate potential conflicts. We have literature in recent years that point to corruption and lack of transparency being at the root of a lot of the upheavals that have taken place in Latin America. So we are not talking theory. We are talking about essentials practical essentials in our region and excuse me the idb has placed transparency at the forefront of its development efforts another reason why transparency is important is that some assets are invisible let me repeat that some assets are invisible so only those who know the value of these assets are going to be having their meetings to determine how they will be shared out. For example, the spectrum is a natural resource. From practically giving it away, the first state to try mathematician John Nash's method made US 7 billion. The Americans didn't know that was possible until they tried John Nash's formula. You can see the movie, A Beautiful Mind. But India was to make 12 billion from thin air 
the spectrum. So assets are valuable. Our people need to understand that. They need to understand that these are part of their assets that they need to pay attention to. So let me rush through this. Manipulation is also invisible. I will mention the uh, I mentioned Belize. I will also tell you that the Belizean people had the scare and the good fortune that when they began to take note of their situation was just before the 2010 Deepwater Horizon spill, 800 miles from them. So they really had an alarm in good time. They said, if that is what can happen, we are going to lose all our beaches and all our tourism for an unknown benefit. Another reason is that governments cannot be trusted. Let me repeat that. Is that news to Guyanese? Governments cannot be trusted, but it's not just in Guyana, all over the world. There are our employees who have lately been in the habit of cooking the books, our books, because we are the shareholders. What they did in inflation, they were caught, person was caught manipulating the inflation statistics. When the girl revealed, leaked because she was tired of it, she was fired or transferred somewhere. Brazilian had what is, Brazil had what is called the fiscal peddling scandal. Governments cannot be trusted. People have to understand that they have to pay attention. They have to understand they are the shareholders of the company. We have the Isinero protesters picketing the office of the president in 2013, voicing their dissatisfaction with the court ruling with regard to the mining operation. You know that that matter went to the IA. International Inter-American Commission for Human Rights and the plight of the Amerindians against the miners was highlighted. We don't know the extent of whatever marginalization is going on here because we're getting no marginalization statistics. What is the economic state of our fishermen? What is the economic state of our Amerindian community? What is the economic state, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because we're not interested. Other companies, other countries publish these things. We are doing a census. I understand it is about started or uh, uh, just in, 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 around now, the 10-year census, and they're going to keep it as a, as, a, as a military secret. That information is ours. And people need to know that they must demand it, that that information can be used for so many other research purposes and ought not to be kept as a military secret so that the party can manipulate votes. It is ours. Our solution, let me end. Our solution is open government. That is the latest fashion, open government. It is a principle that says the information belongs to the people of the country. And there are no secrecy benefits, no one except the corrupt. There is only one valid reason for secrecy in a country, military secrets. Anything else must be disclosed. Well, you can't disclose people's salary. You know that. And uh, you can't disclose the tax tax um, information. That's supposed to be confidential. But all these are the rules that we got where civil servants can't reveal certain things and so on. They have to be brought in line with a new culture, the culture of open government. It must be access to information. And I just, I explained to you earlier that it must be on the basis, not just access, as in India, right to information. The smallest child must be able to ask for information and get it. You can have a man say, oh, you want this? Go to so-and-so. What is that office for? Access to government health information empowers citizens to exercise their rights, hold government accountable, and participate in decision-making. Transparent fiscal management and public contracting discourage corruption and enable reformers to follow the money to ensure that public funds are spent efficiently and in ways that benefit citizens. And providing access to justice information can help citizens better understand their legal problems and the resources available to them. 
I mentioned just now the Amerindians. That's the end of my slide presentation. I don't know if you have any comments or questions. You have spoken a mouthful there, uh, Mr. Collins. Um, um, is it Nirvana you're looking for in Guyana and around the world? Because transparency, open government, are they are they are they achievable? Interesting question. Yes, they are being tried. They are working in other parts of the world. There are people in Bangladesh who have learned the value of paying attention to their um, statistics. And it's not the statistics in the form that we get it from the Bank of Guyana, the central banks. Those figures will kill anybody's interest. But what they're doing is putting it into graphical form. And suddenly, voila, people begin to understand what those figures mean in themselves and what those figures mean to the people. Uh, Mr. So, Collins. Yes, it is working. You can't compare Bangladesh to Guyana. Bangladesh is 100% people of Indian descent. 99% are Muslims. So they have a lot of commonality among, and most of them are Sunnis. Um, so they, they, have a, they have so much commonality. In Guyana, we don't have that. So we got to look at countries, as you mentioned, Lee Kuan Yew, earlier in your presentation, with diverse population and see what they did to bring that about. As we know, in Guyana now, we elect our parliamentarian on a list system. So we don't even know who a parliamentarian is. Exactly. The, leader of the, the leader of the list decides who the parliamentarian will be. Exactly. So we, we start from a bad premise. Even the institutions that are supposed to be independent, the Public Service Commission, the Judicial Service Commission, and so on, the government of the day, with majority in parliament, and the president appoints most members on the board or the commissioners. So we're... Where, where are the independence you're talking about? We have to change those things first. Well, the question of which must be done before what is always an interesting debate. But left alone, the politicians are not going to change anything. It is the people of this country have got to be, the level of consciousness must be lifted to understand that those countries that we, we run into and that our children going to, our relatives going to for education and so on, like how you guys um, have, have, have been able to benefit from those other societies. They went through the sacrifices and struggles and their people. For example, we are looking at a spectacle in Ukraine. The people of Ukraine are something else to behold. In my view, the for, b b before then, the only thing in the, on the record like that was the fight that Haiti had to throw off the French. This, what we are seeing is people deciding, Mr. Russian, I don't care how powerful you are. You ain't gonna boss me, I don't need you here. Now, we Guyanese have to understand that it doesn't matter whether you are of Indian descent, I am of African descent. Singapore had the same problem. And Singapore was born out of an ethnic confrontation. And it took a wise autocrat, because of some, some people think that he was an autocrat, but he was a wise autocrat. And he called the minority group, the Malays, among them when they thought that they were exposed to retaliation from the now majority Chinese. And he called them and he said, that is not going to happen here. Understand that this is going to be a different country. And what we have seen in Singapore, Singapore is a light. We, you're quite correct. I don't agree with you except in one thing. You're saying that we can't compare. And then you said, yes, we, you're saying another way we can compare with Singapore. Well, let me take your second statement. I agree with that. And it doesn't matter. Singapore is a plural society. 
and they were born of ethnic conf confrontation. And look at Singapore today. Uh, we could do it as well. We just have to realize that we should not allow the tail to continue to wag the dog. Dr. Rose? Yeah, uh, Mr. Collins, our last Chancellor and Chief Justice, they were not appointed to full positions. Now we have the same situation here. Our Chancellor and Chief Justice, they have not been appointed. What do you think is the reasons behind this? Well, what, what? I think is the reason, I think it is the same thing that we, we, we suspect. We can't know, but we suspect that what, what we have noticed is that there is a tendency for control of every single organ of the state. There is a, 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 a there is a there is an addiction to control. We have to control. Now, once you have that, the problem with that is that when you are going to do that, the people will not have any confidence in the decision that comes out. Any decisions that come out. Right now, we have a court. And we are more or less confident in the decision, but it seems as though we are doing our best to dismantle the last bastion of confidence that our people have. But to answer your question more directly, I think Dr. Rose might be old enough to know. I used to hear in the 80s, it peddled in the form of a joke, that Forbes wasn't in the habit of conforming any chief justice because they must know that if they don't give any decision that is favorable, they ain't going to be conformed. That is what I recall in the 80s. Now, I don't know. I am not psychic. I can't tell what is the reason and what has to happen first. But I can say that as long as that kind of thing continues, what we are doing is setting the circumstances to reduce the people's confidence in uh, the judiciary and other such related organs. Why do you think there is an addiction by governments to control every organ of government? <laughs> you, you want me to tell you, you want me to tell you uh, what is obvious. Uh, why, does someone, why does someone attempt control? Because the person wants the behavior that is favorable to them. I, I, I don't know any other reason why a person wants uh, control. I would imagine that's the same reason. <laughs> no. Do you know of any other? <laughs> I know. Uh, your organization has been exposing corruption and showing where there's no transparency. But which area you think there is a, the most lack of transparency? Is it the, in the oil industry, or is it in the government actions in Parliament, in the public service, or wherever? Well, that's an that's interesting, an interesting question. question. I would say I where it manifests, manifest. where the lack the of lack transparency of manifests, manifest. and where it is of paramount importance. It's certainly in the oil industry. The contracts, the, 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 the contracts were, were, were born in, 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 uh, in secrecy, probably resurrected in uncertainty because we, are, we, are, we, we, we don't know what to make of that um, retroactive uh, uh, pumping of life into the contract. In fact, Mr. Trotman's um, words was that we, you, we, just, we just tweaked it. But you don't tweak something that don't exist. So there, there, there are so many things about the contract. You could, for example, there, you notice that that article that we sent, where, where we, we where refer you to in the Chronicle, was 2017, June 2017, that we were saying, let us get the contract draft. Well, there was somebody from government, I think I know who it is, made the statement that they were getting organizations like CARICOM and so on to help us with the contract. So we were all um, 
condition to accept that the contract had not been signed. Lo and behold, when the contract came, it was dated 2016. So that is where certainly the biggest impact is felt the lack of transparency in the oil industry. It is, it, it, it is the economic activity that can destroy our country or build it in, in short order. And there were those who don't belong to this land who knew that and knew the ins and outs of it. And we suspect programmed our politicians to behave in the way they are behaving. There were too many secrets. For example, Guyanese did not know, we Guyanese did not know that there were any people who were exploring for petroleum in our waters until Suriname put out the boat. Do you remember that? That is when we heard, that is when we learned that there were people uh, putting out, that they're exploring in Guyana's waters. I will tell you what else uh, transparency has discovered. What we have discovered is that there was a culture of people exploring in our waters, not just the CGX boat, that there have been people exploring for petroleum quietly, unbeknownst to the Guyanese people. In fact, one of the names that we have seen on record is one of the names associated with the geology and mines. Beyond that, I will say nothing more. But it appears as though there has been a culture of quiet exploration for petroleum in our waters. And that is the kind of culture that our politicians have, um, uh, 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 have uh, uh, you know, I know a lot of words, but sometimes my vocabulary fails me. But it's our politicians that have uh, fostered that kind of uh, culture in um, Guyana. And the oil industry, they are the ones all over the world who instigate that kind of conduct. A few weeks ago, some members of the opposition, I think, put forth the theory that there is an emerging apartheid in Guyana. What TIJ has to say about that? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we have said what we have said. I have said that our constitution has provisions to protect not only against marginalization, but threat of marginalization. And neither this government, nor the previous one, nor the previous one since the constitution. I call it the constitutional project because it was supposed to be developed. And all it is, is a document that comes alive when people want, when there's a fight at elections time. But if you read that document, that document is a project that was supposed to continue. And in terms of that, what you're saying there, if the governments were providing us with the kind of information that enabled us to see who is getting what? That claim would either be substantiated or otherwise. I am in no position to make any comment on that because I have no information. Okay. So we are coming to program time now, Dr. Rose. Um, it is nine o'clock almost, so we're getting running out of time. My, my last question though, and can answer this quickly. Do you think ostracization of any sort is going on in the country right now? Be brief. Say that again. What of any sort? Ostracization. I did. I did touch upon ostracization. A few being ostracized. I did say that um, it has been reported to us that anyone in the communities who is known to be reporting, as good citizens should, on what is how money is being spent in the region, is ostracized. That okay. ostracized, I can tell you, has been brought to our attention. Mr. Collins, in closing, um, you mentioned in your presentation that the Constitution does not give the minister the authority to sign away what his minister did in the contract of 2016. 
is in closing your closing remark do you want to no, 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 sorry that's not what i said i what we have been saying all the time is that the original sin was the 1999 contract where the that, that uh, minister at that time allowed signed what the minister was not authorized to sign in terms of the blocks that were awarded exxon and that is what continued to survive in the 2016 contract. Okay, uh, but, but is it a statute barred now to contest in the court or it can be contested in your view? That I don't know and I would not make a comment on because um, I'm not a lawyer. Okay, I, I you want to anything in closing, you. Mr. Collins? I would love to say that I would like to thank you for the opportunity to really put these case um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a concentrated way where um, we, 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 we are not dis distracted. I was a little worried when uh, Dr. Rose started off the way he did, but I think it has been a great session. And um, I want to say that open government, I would invite our listeners to check and to type the phrase in uh, Google, and you will see that it has been catching on in several places. The only people who don't like open government is people who got things to hide. Thank you, Mr. Collins, for spending the evening with us. Dr. Rose, anything in closing? Yes, and again, I'll be calling on for an increase in salary for all police officers, nurses, teachers, the public service, a starting salary of at least $150,000 a month. I'm also calling on the government or the powers to be to pressure those internet companies to provide proper Wi-Fi to people you cannot talk to someone in Guyana without getting interrupted by Wi-Fi. And also, I want to let that the government offices should remain open eight hours a day, and government officials should answer their telephones. It is still not happening. So those are my final comments. I hope that those who are listening to this program will not take it to mean we are anti-government or anti-PEP or anti-opposition or anti apnu We are an independent voice. This is fair and balanced. We bring everyone here to express the views, different views. This is what this platform is all about. So we are not gonna be saddled with anyone telling us we're anti this or anti that. We are pro everything. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose. Yeah, Mr. Collins, you want to say something? I just wanted to, 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 to say, um, you know, I went for my fitness today and um, as I was waiting on it, I looked at the policeman, the condition, how the way he was dressed, the way he was sitting, the people near to him in the station, and somebody came um, to him for their fitness and his words were, wait, you come without helmet in the police station? And the guy just looked at him and he just looked at the guy and handed him. And I'm saying that to say people have seem to have no respect for the police now. And what you said there about minimum wage, we are not showing respect for our people. If it's our children, we perhaps wouldn't have more. Than some of us are flying too high. The poor need to be shown some respect in this country. I agree with you, Dr. Rose. You, you Again, know, to you. you know, quickly, you know what I've discovered? When parties are in opposition, they do everything to capture the votes. And you can call them and talk to them opposite. When they're in government, it is not the same. And that concedes to what Lord Acton says. Absolute power con corrupts, corrupts absolutely. absolutely. And it's happening in governments all around the world today, not only in Guyana. Absolutely. Okay, so in to, to hopefully to bring that into perspective in our, in our program and Mr. Collins' presentation, maybe the government, as they promised, need to look at our constitution and to see those things that are not working, especially the election of office holders, of the president, of ministers, of the parliament, and so on. We need to transform those things to bring into the modern society and have institutions that are independent of government that will rule or, or govern in the, in the interest of all Guyanese. So I hope that also is part of the platform. And we want to thank again our viewers. 
We want to thank both Noir Singh and Devin Bisu for giving us this opportunity. And to you, Mr. Collins and Dr. Rose, thank you so much for being in the program tonight. Thank, thank you too for